Hi, this video is about an end-to-end -end project on forecasting inbound call volume for six months using three years historic data. I got a sample data set from Carol and I have made a little bit of a modification to it so that it will match with my requirement and I can use that for this project. Before moving to the database, let's check what are we going to cover in this video. We are going to check the objectives of this project. What are the questions that we need to be prepared with? What are the assumptions that we need to assume for this project? What are the data collection methods and how are we going to do the data cleaning? What are the data exploring methods? Last and the most important thing is data modeling and visualization. Let's understand the objectives of this project. The objective of this project is that we need to uh, forecast six months call volume for the customer service team and we have three years historic data. Using that, we should be able to get the inbound call volume for six months and the variance percentage has to be less than or equal to 4% and not more than 4%. So this is the requirement. Let's check the questions that we need to work on. What are the forecast assumptions? What are the algorithm or the methods that we are going to use in this project? How accurate is the forecast? And when does this work and when this does not work? What are the assumptions that we are going to make before starting our project? The data set that we have, which I downloaded from Kaggle, that is the reliable data set, that's our assumption. So we are going to assume that it's a reliable data set and it is supplicable for the current situation and it's good for our data analysis. And the call center is not using any different tool or any different practices which is different from other call center. The performance of the call center has never been low or underperformed or have never been in the low performance grid in those three years of historic data that we have. As we finish our objectives and assumptions, let's check out the data collection and data cleaning process. This is the data set I downloaded from Kaggle. I have made a little bit of a modification to it to suit my requirement. So for me, I need a data set where I have to be historically or data and I should be able to use those data to focus the inbound call volume for six months. And that is what I need here. So this is the date, time and calls offered and calls answered column. This is sufficient for an inbound call volume forecast at this point. So let's check the data cleaning process that we're going to start now. So here let's check the format of the field. So when we see the date range, so the date range is in general uh, uh, format and the time is in general format and the calls offered is in general format. So all these four columns are in general format. So let's change it to the right data type. So let's change this to date column. Okay. Uh, not the long date. Let's keep it as short date. Okay, and the time has to be in the time format. And this Columns, calls offered and calls answered. Now, this has to be the number format. And let's keep it as whole number. Okay, so now we got the date format, time, and all these format in the right way. Let's check the uh, blank or the missing values. Okay, so when we see the date format here, this is not categorized correctly. So we are going to uh, correct this. The reason is that we have dots in between. This is not a date format has to be. So let's replace this dot with the hyphen or a slash. I do it with hyphen. Okay, this is done now. So R H O I to just adjust the column width. Okay, so now 
I use shortcut keys most of the time. So all D F F will remove the filter. All D F F will put the filter back. And Alt and Down arrow will show me the deletes of the user filter. And end home it will show me the first and the last entries. So now when we have these entries here, I don't see any blank. And let's go to the date format, and it's categorized in a right way now. And we don't have any blanks here. And let's just go to calls answer. And this has a zero, it's not a blank value, and this does not have a blank value here. And again, here, let me just check. Okay, so here we don't see the blank values either. Okay, this seems to be in a perfect format now. We don't have any missing values. And uh, let's check out the day, uh, the zero or time interval uh, calls. Okay, so let's see that there are a few columns or few dates here which is uh, having zero calls um, and uh, we don't see any format here because one is on 1st of 4th of June, the next is on 11th of June at different timing on a, and the different dates here. So we don't see any patterns here. Okay. Alright, so now we have the uh, first part of the data cleaning finished. So now we'll have to do the data manipulation. This information is not sufficient for us to proceed with our further analysis. So what are we, what are we going to do is we will add a few more columns to them. Okay, so let's add a day here. This just gives a number. And uh, let's just uh, copy this for the whole field. Okay. And let's have the month column. Let's take the week number here. So, week number formula is if the day two, uh, the day number is uh, less than or equal to seven, then it's week one. If day is less than or equal to 14, it's week two. If day is less than or equal to 21, it's week three. And if day is less than or equal to, uh, or less than or equal to 31, then it's week four. So we all just have 31 days. So we just can take that 31 days as week one, week two, week three, okay. So this is what we have here and we just add everything and we can make now, make it as a week 1, week 2, week 3 now, okay. Let's even take day number. It's text like this. Okay, uh, it's the day name, sorry. Okay, and uh, we also take the weekends or weekday. Here again, we got the formula for weekend or weekday. So, if or if this is Sunday or Saturday, then it's weekend or else it's weekday. So let's just drag the whole thing so that we will get the weekend weekday format for the whole row. And let's check out how this works, okay? Alright, so we have weekend weekday. So let's check the weekday or the weekend uh, details. Okay, so we just have Saturday and Sunday here. Alright, so this is what we got. So now we have now we have the required format. Let's plot the pivot table. Let's take the call software and let's put the year in the filter. We don't need the quarter, so we just put this away. And uh, we just need a uh, Week wise, so let's just categorize week wise and for month. 
so let's just not have the date format as well here so okay so now we have this format and let's check for 2019 so here we have this value let's not use this grand value so let's remove this okay so we have that we have week one week two week three and week four data for jan feb march and april so this is how the uh, information looks like so we have almost eighty-eight thousand range calls for every week for the year 2019 and uh, the last week has little call high uh, high compared to other three weeks the reason being uh, this all these three weeks has uh, seven days uh, data and this has almost like if the does this one has 30 days so it's, it has got two more oh, day or oh, extra data this has got just 28 day data so this is exactly as what it is for the previous week and this has got two three days extra data so this is little different from or little higher than the previous weeks so this is okay so we can just uh, accept it because there's no abnormality observed here and we see that the date or uh, the numbers are almost within 80 to 70 thousand or 90 thousand range so it's almost the same we don't see any different patterns here the one month being the high volume day and other few being the low volume day we don't see any patterns here everything almost seems to be the same let's go to the previous year and see how it goes there okay uh, let's go to 2020 and we have only six months data for 2020 and the remaining six months we have to forecast that so here when we see uh, almost the same range even in this year where we have almost 80 to 90 thousand range of calls for every week and the last week is still high that's because of 26 extra okay and uh, almost for 2018 let's check out how it goes there so it's the same again so same 80 to 90 thousand range calls every week and uh, 2017 also looks seems to be the same let's see how it goes okay it's the same thing so here again the same 80 to 90 thousand range calls every week let's check the day wise let's drill down and see how it looks like day wise so instead of week number let me just uh, take the uh, day uh, let me check the day here okay we have the day now we have the call volume for uh, month wise uh, and the day wise so for first second third of every month okay so let's uh, just do the condition formatting uh, let's use condition formatting to understand this patterns better let's say if it is greater than 14,000 as this is what the range goes here uh, let's highlight it in red and uh, less than 9,500 and if it's less than 9,500 let's just highlight this and uh, let's make it as 9000 mm, sorry okay let it be 9500 all right so let me just see this one here okay so we can see that there are a few call volumes which are higher than 14000 and which is less than 9500 okay um, so the patterns of the calls which we observe here, uh, this looks like it does not have any unique patterns as such where any one particular day being too high call volume day or any one particular day being very less call volume day. Okay, so we see that here and there, yes, the random high call volume and low call volume has been recorded, but we don't see that one particular day being high. Ideally, when we see in December, we should be receiving some less calls uh, during this week. Uh, in most of the call centers, that is what it happens, but here we don't see those format here. So we don't see that seasonality here. And this is for 2017. And let's check for 2018. So it could be either where uh, this is not a, a Western uh, country call center where they don't uh, have any Christmas holidays as such for those people who make the calls or who call the customer care. 
and here we have for 2018 and this is how it goes for 2018 so now when we see this is the same quite kind of a format here where we don't see any particular day of any man receiving high call volume continuously or we just see these two days being a little continuous and uh, this could be only for one particular uh, day of a month of august and september yes this is for this year and this again for this year 26th so this is the two pattern which we have a little high call volume on these two days and these two uh, months okay so but this is not the case in any other year, year. When we see here, this is for 2019 and uh, the details here for 2019 is different. We don't see the same 23 or 26 range having the same uh, the same calls for August or September as we saw for the previous year. So again, we don't see any seasonality patterns here for us to uh, take that into consideration. We don't see any trend being followed here. So every day it's almost the same call volume, a little fluctuation here and there, but the call volume is almost stationary. So this is a stationary data. Let me plot a graph to make you understand how the stationary data looks like. So let's just draw, draw a drag graph for this. Now, so let's just take the data in a different column because we won't be able to use the graph. Okay, let's just place the values. Okay, and let's let me take only for Jan. And when we see here, this is the format, and let me just reduce this. Okay, let me just make it as eight thousand. All right, so we have this as our graph for Jan 2019, so it's almost stationary when we see here. Let's check for some other date. Uh, let's uh, check, check for uh, some other month, sorry. Okay, so let's just do it for um, Let's do it for the month uh, May. Let's plot the graph in the same way for the month of May. And let's reduce this to 8000 again. Okay. So we just have almost a similar graph. Almost similar as the way it was for this. And let's just take for the final November month and see how the graphical representation looks like. Okay, so this is again almost the same format. So when we see these three graphs, it's almost in the same pattern. It's almost considered as a stationary graph, a stationary trend, uh, where we don't see any continuous lag, lead or continuous lag in the call value patterns, where there's no spike in any of those months or any day continuously, and there's no sudden drop. This is a little high comparatively a little high when you compare this to the previous data but it's not a drastic high or a drastic low in call volume so we don't really consider it as a trending pattern this is what we consider it as a stationary graph okay so you can just do the same thing for the different uh, month or different year let's do it for 2020 and it could be almost the same and you see here it's almost in 10 12 of these ranges and this also is of the same range so we just see a little here and there the spike in high uh, spike in call volume other than that we just see the same kind of format here so this is also a stationary format here Let's explore the data using the Power BI. Let's do a data analysis on what all we have done and let's check out the stationary patterns in Power BI. 
Here we have our Power BI dashboard and you can see that the call volume, uh, total calls offered, calls answered, average call and the abandoned call and the abandoned percentage. So these are the informations that we have here and this is for this four years or the three years of historic data and for 2020 we just have six months data. This is a month and this is a heat map and these are the maps for month-wise data and this is the time interval data. So let's check how it goes when we have a look at all these uh, graphs and we let's understand the patterns of the data. Here where we see this is the data for 2019 February and uh, this is how the call flow looks like and let's check for this low call volume day, day which is 9071 calls and uh, let's just click on this and this gives us the time interval data where on 10th of uh, February 2019 from the morning to the day full day this is how the call pattern looks like by the day of interval wise. So this is how the day interval looked like and we received very less calls at 4 p.m., very less call at 1 p.m. and uh, this is how the pattern of the calls looks like, time interval wise. And when we look at the high call volume day, which was on uh, uh, 11th, On 19th, we have uh, at, uh, at uh, 7 p.m. we have very less call volume, and the remaining all the other time intervals we receive sufficient calls. This is a heat map which tells us on which week of the day we receive high call volume. So there's no such good patterns where we can see that any one particular week uh, had a real high call volume. So it's almost like uh, equally uh, distributed call volume. So we don't see any good patterns here. Let's check for the next one. So again, we don't see any patterns here. And this is how the call range looks like. And uh, the high call volume was on 18th. And this is how it looks like. The total call volume for that particular month was 3,69,000 and the total answer was 3,64,000. And uh, this is how the call flow looks like with no such patterns about high call volume on any of the weekday or any of the days or at any time in the world. It's the same for the previous year as well. We don't see such a good patterns where we can consider that as a pattern to be followed for the next year. Okay, so here again we don't see that uh, the heat map also shows that there have not been any high quality volume on any particular day of every, any month. On Monday, it's uh, Sunday, every day it's uh, different and a little here and there are high quality volume. And even the intervals also are different. Somewhere, some intervals have received high call volume, and another day, the same interval we received less call volume. So we don't have any patterns on volume intervals and the day, weekday, or weekend intervals. Okay, so this is a little bit of data exploring that we done. We explored how we can check the data in the background. We now understood that this is how we can check the data, analyze what all the structure that we have or the trend and the patterns that we can see. And again, this is a stationary data where it is almost like a little high or a little low. This is much expected, but it's not like a too high or too low call volume. So, so far what we have done is we have done a data evaluation and we have explored the possibilities. And uh, we got these two data where we, the, we understood the data is stationary and uh, we need have checked the historic data and checked the patterns of all those historic data trends in the, the data structure. Now that we understood the data structure, let's check which model is suitable for inbound call forecast. So as we know that we have to do the forecast for 1st of July, to 31st of December 2020. This is the range that we have to do the forecast for. But we'll have to check if our forecast is accurate or not. So let's consider the June data 
So here, here we uh, I have June data for 2017, 18, and 19. I'm not going to use 2020 data because I'm going to compare my forecast uh, uh, with the 2020 data to understand if my forecast is somewhere close to the actual call volume for 2020. The first method that we're going to use here is seasonality or trend. So seasonality is where we understand that any one season or in a year, in a month where we have received extremely high call volume or extremely low call volume, where we can consider that as a pattern to follow it into the future data as well. But we don't see any such patterns here. We don't see any seasonality. So seasonality is for almost the same for all the 12 months. And let's do the trend analysis. Let's see how the trend looks like here. It's a stationary trend, but let's see the percentage of the trend and let's understand and let's try to forecast using the trend analysis. So to do the trend analysis forecast method, let's uh, check the 2017 data. I'm just going to take this and uh, let's sum it up before that. So let's just sum this whole value or is equal to, we'll sum this up. Control R. We'll just add the values to all these fields and it's the same. Let's just do it for control R and have this for 2020. Okay. So let's go here and try to use the trend method. So let's try the trend method. I'm going to take the uh, data for this one and let me lock this okay so once I lock this I should be able to get the trend percentage so this is 3% of the total trend so 3% of the total volume is what we have here this is how the trend works so let's uh, drag and drop and then have it for, the, for all the rules and let me just follow the same here control R but as I've locked the field here it's not c it is d so let me just change this to d and uh, the the row number will be the same and here it's e okay so now we have this one here so d for uh, d and then e for e so let's just drag the whole thing okay so let's take the average of these trends Okay, so this is the average and let's just take the average of everything. So when we look at the average of everything, so this is how it looks like. So this is almost 3% overall as the average count that we have here. So what are we going to do is, let's take the average of these three sum. Okay, average. And let's add 3% and let's see what would be the 3% uh, uh, high or uh, high call volume when compared when compared to the previous uh, average of these three. So let's just go do this into 3% and let's add it with the previous value. Okay, so if we add 3% to the overall average of these three. It's 3,69,000. So, so this is what I can say that this is the um, average of uh, the trend uh, analysis method. Through using the trend analysis method, we arrived at this number saying that this could be the forecasted call volume. And whereas we received 3,56,000 in the year 2020 for June. And as per the trend analysis forecast, we should be receiving 3,69,000 in the month of June 2020. This, this is the forecast using trend analysis. But we see that the numbers are a little uh, different and a little high. Uh, so we almost see that almost 10,000 high in call volume for the year. So let's check if there are any other methods if we can improve this forecast method. This is our exponential smoothing formula. And of, as for this, if we are if you are doing the forecast for 2018, we have to consider high weightage for 2017. That's the recent one, 
and the, the less weight it has to be distributed across the previous years. So this is what it shows. So as uh, we are doing the forecast for 2020 using 2018, 19 and 17 uh, data. So this is what we follow here. For uh, all those uh, years data, so we are just using the weighted average method. This also works like a weighted average method. So let's just try doing the weighted average method here or the exponential smoothing using the formula which is mentioned there. So as per this, we just have to give a high weightage to the recent or the previous old data. Uh, so let's give 60% weightage to our 2019 data. 60% of 2019. I'm not going to take 2020 because I'm going to use that as a test data so that we can compare our analysis to understand how accurate is our uh, forecast. And uh, we can also take this one into uh, 20%. So let's add 20% to this. And the remaining 20%, let me add this to 2017 data. So the, as per the exponential smoothing method, this is what we have. Okay, so, uh, so let's just sum it up to see what is the actual uh, sum of the forecast volume on uh, this equal to, we will sum it up. And uh, the, as per the exponential smoothing method, we have this as our uh, overall forecasted volume for June 2020. And uh, we have our actual call volume for 2020, which is 3,56,000. And as for the exponential smoothing method, we got 3,54,000 as our uh, forecasted call volume. So this looks really very close and very much similar. We can consider this value. However, let's see if we can improve this method by seeing another fe feature that we have, which is within Excel. We have an inbuilt feature to forecast the call volume. Let's use the Excel inbuilt forecast feature or the function. Let's use three these three columns and uh, we'll just need to go to data, forecast sheet and we, we get a small chart here. This is for the previous year and this orange line is for the forecast period. So this has forecasted for a few of those days in the future. But we don't need too many data here. So we just uh, make it as 31st of December. So this is where we need the data till. And uh, let's use the data from 1st of June so that we can compare it. And we have the confidence on our data interval because uh, everything is stationary data. So we can rely upon the previous patterns. So we don't have to change this percentage. If we would see that we really cannot uh, completely rely upon the previous data patterns, then we can reduce the percentage here. But here as it's a stationary data, I rely on this pattern. So I don't have to make any changes here. And let me set the manual seasonality to 12 as we have the 12 months as a seasonality here. You know, we don't see any difference. Let's include the forecast statistics. So we have included the forecast statistics and interpolation is where if there is any missing data, then it will take the average of the here for a higher one and the lower one and it takes the average of it and that's how the interpolation calculation works. So we can just ignore it at this point because we don't have any missing values. Let's use the sum. Okay, so let's create the forecast chart. And we have this one here. So this is where the intersection shows that this is the uh, focus which has been done comparing with the actual data so that we understand how accurate this forecast is. Okay, let's just make it small. So using this, using this method, we were able to forecast the data from 1st of June till 31st of December. But we need to check how accurate is this data. So let's just convert this number into a whole number. 
okay so now we have uh, the data so let's compare it first of june till 30th of june our call volume uh, is 354000 as we checked previously and as for the forecast this is the low confidence and this is the upper confidence so low confidence is the least uh, that we can get and this is the highest that we can get and of course for the first row it's the same so the least what we can get on that day is 8000 and the highest that we can get is on 14000 this is what the forecast predicted volume is and when we see this uh, so this is the average of those two upper and lower confidence value now let's just use this number and see what is the forecast volume as per this method so forecast volume for from 30th of june till 1st of june so when we just take this number and sum it up so it's 330000 is what the total sum is which is almost 20000 less than what we were expecting or what we should be receiving in 2020 so this is something that uh, we should, won't be able to take it as a good number and also if we have to check the variance percentage of this let's check the variance percentage which is actual minus the forecasted volume so now when we see here uh, this is the number that we can see and uh, this is the forecast variance where forecast variance is actual minus forecast divided by the actual value so sorry this is actual value so actual minus forecast divided by the actual value so here zero percent because everything is similar and we have the forecast for all these other days and uh, let's check the average of it which is five percent so as per our objective the forecast has to be less than or equal to four percent and not more than four percent so this is a little more than what our objective says so let's not consider this because this is not an applicable pattern here. Let's go back to exponential smoothing method and as we see that the forecasted volume which is 354,000 and actual call received in the year 2020 for June was 356,000 which is very close. So we are going to consider exponential smoothing method as our final forecast method. And using this method, let's arrive at the output for the remaining months, which is from 1st of July to 31st of December. Using exponential smoothing method, I got this number here from 1st of July to 31st of December. So these are the volumes, which is the forecasted volume. And this is the graph. This is how it looks like. Almost a stationary graph as the way we saw for the previous years. So now we have our forecasted call volume. Let's compare it with the previous years to understand if the patterns are almost the same. Because for 2017, 18 and 19 we have been receiving almost the same patterns. So it should be the same even with 2020 forecast that we have done. So let's check how the pattern looks like using the Power BI. As we have the forecast for 2020 only from July to December, so we are just using this month 2020 here. And as for this graph, when we see for August 2020, the forecasted call volume, this is for the forecasted uh, uh, value, and this is the calls offered for the previous year. So the forecasted call volume for this is 370,000 would be the forecasted call volume for J August 2020. And this is for the previous year. This is for 2018 August. And when we see here the 2019 August data is still like 84,000. So this is what it is. This is how the graph looks like, almost similar for 2018. And uh, 2019, let's check for 2019 as well. And for 2019, so we see that it's almost the same. The reason being we maybe have considered exponential smoothing method, where as for this, the recent one, which is 2019 pattern will be followed more as we have given 60% percentage to this pattern with this data. So we almost get the same pattern or the same data. Uh, but uh, as, the, as we have this as a stationary pattern, this is very useful only in this situation. If the trend was different, if it was like a lead or a lag trend, 
we should have used a r i m a arima method that is the average uh, auto regression integrated moving average so that is what the arima is so we should be using that method but here as the data is stationary we don't have to stress too much on this data so it's a very simple and a standard stationary data that is the reason it was very easy to forecast a call volume for such stationary data and i'm using the exponential smoothing method which works almost like uh, the real correct pattern for our forecast which we can rely upon Let's look for November forecasted data, which is uh, if we look at November data, the, the some forecasted call volume would be three lakh sixty four thousand, and this is how the pattern of the uh, call volume looks like. And let's go to twenty nineteen November, and we received three lakh fifty eight thousand in the month of November twenty nineteen, and this is how the pattern looks like for the previous year. So it's almost the same. We have almost similar call volume and similar call patterns, and uh, we have been we have been receiving the same call patterns or same call volumes from past three years, and that has to be the same even for the next year. That is the 2020 forecasting uh, period. So it's the same pattern which we have followed now, and this has been continued. So now, now when we see this is almost similar to our previous pattern, and we can consider this as our final output. Let's check the forecast method that we have used here. So the, what are the methods that we used to forecast this call volume? So we check the time series analysis using the trend and the seasonality analysis. We understood the correlation between the previous pattern data and the current pattern data, and we try to understand how stationary the data is. And we also try to check if there's any holiday factor or any other different uh, seasonality factor, and we did not find any such patterns in this data. We check the inbuilt method, which is the forecast method which we have in Excel. So we use that inbuilt function within Excel, and we try to forecast our output. And we did not get any good results out of it. And we finally considered exponential smoothing as the best method for our analysis. What are the data modeling and visualizations that we have done? We executed the data models like the trend analysis and the input function, which was the forecast function within Excel, and the exponential smoothing method. These are the models that we use to understand what will be the best method to analyze and uh, forecast the input call volume data. We even check that with our test data to understand the accuracy and the variance percentage. And we understood that for trend analysis and the forecast uh, function, which was within Excel, did not give us the good results. So we now have considered exponential smoothing as the best way, or the uh, suitable, reliable output for our forecast. We have even checked the graphical interpretation about how the forecasted call volume and the previous call volume pattern matches. Finally, we have our output here for quarter three and quarter four, and this is how a similar graph looks like, which is almost stationary data as the way it was for the previous years. And let's understand when does this work and when does this not work. So this works only when we don't have any lag or deep trend, because as I have been mentioning, that it's a stationary data, and this works when the business is still using the same type of a call and the same process flow. If they've implemented any new product or if they have made any change to the existing product, then the call pattern may also differ. And market fluctuation, and if there is any such market fluctuation, we are assuming that this does not have any influence on our call pattern. 
overall this is what the project all about this was an end to end project from uh, taking the historic data collecting and manipulating it and then putting it into models and visualizing it and finally finalizing the right method for our analysis and we now have our output for the next 6 months so this is what the project is all about using excel and power bi thank you